Welcome back. I'm George. I'm here as your humble host and will always attempt to be as clear and precise as I possibly can. Now, today's video is going to be on PID, Proportional Integral Derivative Control. I'm going to introduce you to this. I'll show you this. Um, and then I'm going to explain briefly uh, so we understand what precision is when it comes to temperature control. Uh, by the way, I just watched a really good video this morning by Durbin's Bourbon, and um, he's got a really, really interesting new uh, item that uh, they did a review on. It's about crystal clear, transparent ice cubes. Quite amazing. You might want to check that out. So, just a real quick teaser for you. Uh, here in about 48 hours, myself, Bearded and Board, and a Jesse from Stillet are going to link up. We've got two full days, and uh, we're going to spend some quality time together. We're going to do some collaboration. We're going to do a couple of videos together, and we're going to share those with you because you asked for it. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, know them both. Met. We're just we're just happy to get the three amigos together and see what we can come up with. Now I've provided over 500 of these items um, throughout the world. Um, it, some of them are, every one of them is actually custom made. I have a base model here that, I, that I'm going to show you, um, but, and then I'm going to tell you how they work. They all work the same way, uh, but uh, they're custom made, so it's whatever you want. Uh, all you got to do is get in touch with me. There's my email address. Just You send me an email, and we work out a price. I send you an invoice, and you pay it online, and boom, there it is. So, uh, I've got great reviews from many, many users, and um, I just want to make sure I share this with everybody else. Now, these things uh, are very, very self-intuitive, I would call them. Okay, it's called a PID controller, and you notice on this one, this is a 120-volt model. Uh, it's limited to 20 amps, so you're looking at a 2,000-watt heater element. Uh, this is capable, very capable, and will easily handle up to a 15 gallon still with no problem. Um, don't use a larger element because it won't handle it. It's built for a 20 amp circuit and you don't want to overload it. If you overload it, it you're on. Uh, if anything else goes wrong, just get in touch with me. Uh, we'll fix them, uh, replace them, and um, oh by the way, if you're really, really interested in upgrading later on, uh, we can offer you a trade-in value. So keep that in mind. Um, I've got a set value here of 73 degrees and my perceived value. What I'm sensing with my thermocouple is 72.6 degrees and you can see this little light's flashing. Uh, we're going to show you how that works here in just a moment. Uh, we put a, an amp meter right here in the very center of this box. Uh, the only difference between this box, oh yes, and this box is, uh, this one's absent the amp meter. It's totally up to you. See, they, they, they can be custom made to fit any design or, or any requirement. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, it's for those of you who want an amp meter, that's fine. That's just an extra cool point. But if you just push the set button one time while it's working, the bottom readout will give you the percentage of power that it's, produ it's providing to your heater element. And it'll bounce around from anywhere from zero to 100. It, it'll bounce around as it's making its adjustments. And then just push the set button, that turns it back off. Let's set this one aside. Now, the way these are made is that you always have, uh, for, your, for your water pump, radio, fan, whatever you want, uh, we put the accessory receptacle on the bottom, and we mark that. And you'll notice that the light comes on and that light will stay on as long as this is plugged in and as long as this is turned on because that's permanently hot. Now the one that's marked element is the one that operates your heater element. And that's a little bit different because that's controlled by this PID unit. And when we plug it in, you'll notice that that light's flashing. Now, what, now what's that doing? This is actually controlling the amount of power amperage and voltage going to that light to try to match the perceived temperature with the set value. And you'll see it's it's thinking, it's going, well, wait a minute, I just, I got a look, it's starting to drop, 
So let me hit a little bit of power just to see if I can maintain that. Let me let me describe how this works. Now each one of these also comes with oh yeah, a happy distilling and I sign them, George. And I decorate every one of them with the American flag. These have an internal fan for cooling. <coughs> I uh, install a large solid state relay so that you shouldn't have any problems with that. Now, if anything goes wrong with it, like I said, just, just get in touch with me. Um, I'll fix it, replace it, wh whatever the case may be. Uh, out of all 500, I think I've done that four times. Um, and if, if you just want to... By the way, if you blow it up and you send it back to me and, and it's and you've overloaded it and blown it up, sorry, that's your fault. Okay? The fair is fair. But if it's something I've done or uh, it's something that's just not matching what you're looking for, just let me know. All right. Oh, before we go any further, this does have an auto-tune function. All right? They come preset uh, to fit the process of what we're using them for, whether that be a still, a Bakelite oven, or any of those other heating processes. Um, what we will do um, is have that preset for you. Now, this is the small blue button. It's, called, it's an AT button. It's called Auto-Tune. Um, you don't have to mess with anything, but should you decide to do that, uh, just understand, just call me on the phone if you get the parameters screwed up, because if you prematurely try to auto-tune this, or you auto-tune it frequently, one behind the other, uh, you, it has a tendency to, you, you have a tendency to confuse it. So all of a sudden, your temperatures go, start going cattywampus on you, and you get these wide swings, and then you think it's not working. It's working. It's doing what you told it to do. So just give me a call, or follow the directions that I include um, to set it back to its original settings and everything should be okay there should be no need to auto tune but if but if you do just be forewarned that you could confuse it let's turn this off set that aside yes we've got the board and the board we're going to explain briefly so that you understand what proportional integral and derivative control does now we're all familiar with the uh, thermostat in the house your thermostat in the house is a proportional, and in a lot of times, your digital ones are proportional integral. They just don't have the derivative function. Now, then there's a reason for that, of course, because you don't need that type of precise control. Um, yes. It's drawing time. The Real, real simple. We're going to work with just the proportional, the P, uh, setting first, where your length is going to be time, and that's over a period of time, and this is going to be degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. It, it, it you choose. All right. Now, if we make if we set our PID controller to, I'll give you. Let's set it to 170 because that's generally where we're around about where we're at. And we set that, and that set point never changes over time because you set it. You can change it. You can change it up. You can change it down. But once you set that set point, it's it's there. Now, as the PID starts and you turn it on, uh, whatever temperature it senses, it's going to make a comparison, a proportionate comparison between the set point and the uh, perceived temperature, or it's really perceived value, but I call it perceived temperature. And it's going to start to heat up. Now, if you leave it with just proportional control, it's going to rise until it gets to the set point, and then it's going to shut off. But all that energy and heat that's already been provided is going to remain going in, and you're going to overshoot your set point. So far so good? Okay. Now remember it's turned off. So now you're going to start to lose that energy because it's no longer being applied and that is going to start to, your temperature is going to start to drop. Now your temperature is going to drop and it's going to cross that set point line again and when it does that element's going to come back on. 
But when that element comes on, remember it's already dropping, you've already lost a lot of energy that you now have to replace. So that replacement's taking place, but your temperature's still dropping, so it, it goes below your set point. Until that energy's been replaced, and then it again makes another turn and starts to come back up. And then you start going through this over and over again, and we call this droop. So it's overshoot and droop. Now, what we need to do is we need to eliminate that as much as possible. Okay? So what we do is we introduce, let's do this, we introduce a, an integral plus an integral. It's a period of time. Okay? So what it does is it compares, as it starts to go up, it compares that proportion between here and here over a time from here to here. You follow me? Now how fast is it getting from here to here between these two periods? And as it does that, it makes an adjustment to the power so that when it hits that point, it starts to shut off before it gets there so that once it hits that point, it is off, and then as it goes above, you'll still get a little bit of overshoot, but what's it doing? It's now measuring from here to here at the same time. So it's measuring the proportion of the error of the set value and perceived value, but it's doing it over a period of time, a finite period of time. And then, of course, it reverses that operation, and it brings it back down. Now what this does over a period of time is this. So the integral portion is designed to reduce the overshoot and the droop. Make sense? Now, that's more likely how your thermostat works in the house or in, in some of the other processes you may be familiar with. But when we add change the color. Let's change this one to red. When we add the derivative function, now remember, and the derivative function is something totally different. It's a function of the, the, the maximum and the minimum, so it's a curve. It's, and what that is, is we're going to measure what happens underneath here. Hmm. Let me try to explain a little bit better. As the temperature starts to rise, we use a second one here. The temperature starts to rise. Your proportional function is going to compare this temperature to this temperature. So it's going to know what the distance is in between those two. And you can adjust that. We shorten it down to one. So it's a one to one. Well, that's not only a ratio, but it's just the difference of one. When it gets there, it's also going to measure from here to here. It's also measuring from here to here and here to here. It wants to know the time difference between this point and this point and this point and this point. You follow? So it's starting to get an idea of what is the requirement in order to get from here to here. Okay, are we there yet? Okay. <laughs> so we've got this time function going on. And then what it does is, again, it shuts off at a point where it's determined before your set point because uh, it knows it's going to overshoot just a little bit. And then the reverse process happens and it comes back down. Now, the beauty behind the derivative function is that, again, it measures this distance, this, under, uh, this the under, underneath your curve, or above your curve and that proportion of how much does it change over that period of time in relation to the amount of temperature increase or decrease that takes place in a, spe a specified time. Hmm. So you follow me? So it's going to measure time and then it's going to measure the amount of change within the specified time compared to the set temperature and the perceived temperature. 
Now, as it does that, it's called an algorithm, and it runs through this thing like a billion times over and over and over and over again, so it's constantly adjusting. And what that does is it brings your temperature up. It'll droop just a little bit, hit just above, but now it makes its calculation and fixes itself, and you wind up with a steady temperature that's constant. So your set temperature and your perceived temperature will normally be within two tenths of a degree of each other because it's constantly making that adjustment. Now, if you are running just a proportional integral over a extended period of time, what you'd have is you'd have up, down, up, down, up, down. It would get slow, lower, lower, and then it would never reach the set temperature. It would stay directly below the set temperature. And that's what just proportional integral does. So, once we've added the derivative to it, we've got a very, very smooth, precise control over temperature. And that's as simple as you can possibly make it uh, without going through the calculus and all that other stuff that uh, we use to determine that. So, that brings us to a close and also an announcement. Um, if you just stay tuned next week, you're going to find, you're going to see, uh, we're going to post a new video. I will link up within the next 48 hours with Bearded and Board and with Jesse from Stillet right here in the great state of Texas. Uh, we're going to do a couple of videos. We're going to do a collaboration and uh, we're going to share that with you uh, as soon as we possibly can. Happy distilling.